So as you can see behind me and as we walk down, this is in the middle of some bushland, some uh, really nice sort of remnant box and pine sort of bush. Um, we've built a compound which is consisting of 2400 high chain wire uh, with 50 MB posts with four support wires and it's a, an animal enclosure. So we're trying to have minimal ground disturbance and yet have something that looks good and is also effective at keeping animals in and out. So basically we had to just conform to the ground conditions. So you can see down here we've actually bolted our posts onto the top of the culvert and then we've just done a bit of top rail around the edge. So chain wire predominantly is very difficult to, to get looking really good over curves. So you can see here what we've done is we've actually pulled the wire together up here it's tight down at the bottom, so it actually looks quite good. You, you'd be almost hard pressed to know it's got a bend in it. So yeah, this section was pretty steep. Uh, couldn't use the Vermeer, couldn't use the Utes um, to build the fence, but we were able to get up here with the help of some chains on the Ute to drop some gear at the top. So what we've done on the corners is we've actually cut them at 45 instead of having a sharp 90 degree angle that's not good for, for animals we've, we've rounded the, we'll say rounded but we've cut the corners off so this is the um the top section that was a little bit flatter we can get the utes up here drop our gear it's like a bit of a dump and then work down both ways so this is where we came down from that hill we've got a actual um inside corner i think you'd so we had to pull the chain wire onto the post. Uh, again, we, we pulled the top together because as you go through a gully or a dip, the top gets loose. And if you go over a ridge, the bottom's loose. So I pulled it in. Um, um, a big change of, of height just here around this section to get up onto the roadway. And then we came across, so top rail the whole lot through here. It was just too hard to get sort of, there's no sharp corners to put a stay in. So top rail through here, the old bridge came over that. Again, we concreted onto the, um, uh, sorry, we screwed onto the concrete bridge. On the other side, you can see the second um, enclosure that goes up to a bit, a bit smaller and a bit drier sort of the hill. So the idea is they can move the animals from, from either enclosure depending on the time of year. So alleyway through here, so you can still got road access to the rest of the, the facility. The brief was that we had to have the fence down each side of the roadway, but we needed to have a gate section that would cross over and let the animals through without them escaping. So this is what we came up with. So we still haven't quite finished here, but I'll point out what we have. So we call these an airlock. They're not an airlock, obviously, but they're a, a double-sided gateway so that you can close this gate before you enter the pen, which means that the animals can't escape when you're getting in to feed them. Um, so that's just on a, a slam shut catch. So we've got one of these entrance airlocks into each pen. 4.2 meter gates with uh, 50 by 50 mesh on either side and then the way it works is that you can open this gate and then bring this gate around and they can safely move animals between both enclosures one thing we have done with these gates is it's only very basic but the idea is that it sits up onto that they can put a padlock through it and it also supports the weight of the gates when they're shut so there we go um two enclosures for animals been fencing for 30 years and i've never done one like this with the eight foot high chain wire so <laughs> every day is different what a great place to work